Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you to Ellen, to Nomi. Thank you always, Nomi. To Sira Liba, thank you for what you shared this morning. To Chaya, to Rebbe Tzniagid, and to Basia. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Um, we have the great honor and privilege of having another wonderful Jewish woman join us. And her name is Miriam Leah Gamliel. She is the... Um, co-founder and director of ATARA, the Arts and Torah Association, supporting religious women in the creative and performing arts. With ATARA, she brought religious female English-speaking artists together for community, performances, and master classes. ATARA currently collates the work of observant female artists in the form of playlists and monthly news relating to arts work in the Orthodox community worldwide. You can learn more about Atara at www.artsandtorah.org. I went to a conference that you had years ago, and so it's so wonderful to have you here today. Outside of Atara, Miriam Leah recently completed her doctorate in Jewish education with a focus on the needs of creatively gifted students and the overlap between creativity and spirituality. She has directed and produced theater, film, and extracurricular arts programming, performed and taught in the fields of voice, acting, and dance, and writes theater scripts and children's literature. She holds master's degrees in Jewish history and library and information science. Miriam Leah is originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but resides in Montreal with her biggest challenge to date, being mothering three young children during COVID. Wow. Okay, welcome, and we're so looking forward to hearing from you, and we're glad you're here today. It's such an incredible zechus. Um, this is really a community that is for sure bringing the geula based on Nomi's um, authentic, heartfelt prayer this morning, and just gathering every morning to do this prayer and these tefillot and learning. It's it's staggering. I I hope that I am sure all of you know and appreciate that, and that's why you come every day. But just in case you needed that extra boost, it's absolutely staggering how um, how incredible this initiative is, and it, it's just such a zechus. Um, also, um, that it's Rosh Chodesh. I, I'm, I'm not sure why I have this extra zechus. Um, and so um, really, I, I should be talking about the month of Tammuz. Um, and so like, I guess a little snippet is the, um, the Tam and the Vav and Zion. So like, if you break it down, like just <laughs> something on Rosh Chodesh before we start um, to just have that energy of Rosh Chodesh. Um, so Tam is like the, the sense of the, the flavor. Um, so what's it the flavor of? Vav and Zion. Um, and Vav and Zion is like male and female. So, um, but they're, but they're not touching like the Zion sort of, you know, there's, there's a little bit of um, hovering that they're next to each other. And so just the, I guess the unification, it doesn't necessarily have to be in physical form, a male and a female. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be about relationships, although clearly one can make it um, a month of, you know, um, relationship cultivation, but, um, but also, you know, just the conceptual unification of um, that which is masculine and that which is feminine. So I wish you all um, a unification <laughs> during this month of Tammuz um, and a Chodesh Tov. Um, and also it happens to be the first yard site of uh, my daughter's teacher um, from last year. Uh, she was three years old and her teacher was only 42 um, and she was Nifter. And so today I think is her uh, it's, it's her first year at Zayit. And uh, I think I'm going to paste her Hebrew name into the Nishmas group, um, but I'll, I'll try to pronounce it. Um, so it's Chaya Risa, but Rav Barach Bandit, base Ayan Nun Dalid Yud Tet. Um, so I'll paste that, and it should be an Aliyah for her Nishama. 
as well as Yitzhak Zev, who was mentioned earlier, and also um, all that all who need refuah, and Dr. Zalimpo. Okay, so in terms of the subject, <laughs> as it was titled, um, I'm, I probably could have come up with a more creative name, um, but it happened to be that that was the subject that I was reading about um, on Shabbat. So this is really um, goes back to my personal interest in Jewish history. Um, and I, I think that in general, um, if if anyone has right, if one door closes, then you know you need to find the open door. And so, as a, a religious female, you know I was not able to go into the rabbinate. So instead, I just thought that you know learning about Jewish history would at least satisfy my interest in learning more about Judaism and Torah. So I really um, pursued that with the fervor of just someone who wanted to learn more Torah and needed that, you know, extra um, layer. So, um, so that's, it's really just a personal interest in um, Judaism and Jewish history. Um, but I was also, um, so in every paper that I wrote, I really pursued um, resolution to questions that I had personally. So, um, you know, right, like why, why, why is Passaic and why are Passaic and Crown Heights so different? Like what makes them so different? As of Altruva, you know, everyone was sort of the same. They all had the same food on Shabbos. And, you know, we were all following the same halacha um, for the most part. And so it really, it really bothered me fundamentally that there were differences and that people weren't, were, you know, had some sort of negative association with, um, those who were different than themselves. Um, and so I just wanted to understand, you know, the origin, like where this came from and, you know, what it was based on. And so I really started focusing on the differences between Hasidim and Misnagdim um, in the origins of the origins of the movements. And also um, in general, like, you know, what is this, was there precedent, you know, is there um, like, did Hasidism just emerge in the you know, 18th century, you know, like the, this is just, you know, uh, uh, um, was the Baal Shem Tov responsible for all of these ideas or was this based on, um, you know, Torah Misenai? And so what was the, you know, what was the basis for, you know, for all of the um, concepts that are studied, you know, where are they coming from? And what is the, where are their sources in, in Torah and in, you know, in Hashem's Torah? So that's where this is all coming from. So I'm going to try to just, you know, give you some basic um, terminology and overview and then um, and then, you know, um, translate that into, you know, where we are today. So I hope that that's OK. Um, just to tech check. Am I being I'm assuming that I'm being heard, but anyone's free to interrupt um, if you need to interrupt me. Hang on. I already said. Okay. Okay. So first of all, what does the word imminence mean? Um, for those of you who are not, um, you know, <laughs> doctors of philosophy and for whom this vocabulary isn't necessarily um, on the tip of your tongue, um, essentially it's presence in the world. So, um, you know, um, God's real felt presence um, in the world. So, you know, is, is Hashem with us in every leaf, in every tree, or is, is God, um, you know, an authority figure who, um, who dictates, you know, from, from a lofty place of, um, of spiritual, you know, godliness, um, and to us as lowly humans, um, you know, how, what's the interaction of godliness and the world? So there are different views. Um, and another basic word vocabulary is the concept of tzimtzum. So, you know, if, 
you know, if you're, if you come to say that the whole world is God, then how does the chair exist? How does, how do, how am I differentiated from you? If we're all godliness, then, you know, why, why do we have different opinions? Um, or, you know, how, right? Like how, how is there, how is it possible to have black and white? Um, so that um, Hashem removes him, one concept is that Hashem removes himself in order to allow um, the, the, the small drip drops of, um, of the physical world that we know. Um, and so it's, it's, con it's contrived, it's conceived, it's, it's intentional um, that Hashem um, pulls back in order to, um, in order to make something palatable um, and make something um, that is other than oneness so that we perceive, um, you know, multiplicity, but that, that it's really coming from oneness, but our perception is multiplicity because then there's the ability to um, have um, multiple multiple reactions. So it's, you know, it's, do we understand it? <laughs> I mean, um, we're, we're within it. So, um, but I guess, you know, a, a, a metaphor is, you know, in the same way that you'll take a child and, you know, you have to walk slowly and you want to run across the street because you walk quickly and you don't need to, you know, wait and, and, and take, you know, walk five inches at a time. But when you're helping a child, you, um, you know, you walk slowly, you look at every detail, you, you break things down to the level of um, the, the capacity um, of the receiver. And so Hashem in his goodness, you know, breaks things down um, so that we can receive. Um, so just in general. Um, so, um, so, then again, in terms of general vocabulary, um, who, what is Hasidism and uh, and Hasidim and the and what are Misnagdim? Um, so, um, so Hasidism um, as a movement um, began in the 18th century, but the concepts on which it's based are. Um, essentially the ideas of um, mysticism and um, but even the Kabbalah was redacted you know in in um, in in early modern times or in you know <laughs> based on you know based on scholars who then redacted this wisdom Them, but the wisdom itself, and so the author of the authors of any of the Sepharim on the on mysticism are 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 authoring wisdom um, that was also is based on you know the time of creation and um, and mystical um, themes that were um, studied even during the base of Mikdash. Um, and they were um, traced even to Avraham. And so they were, these were themes that have been in the world potentially since Adam Harishon. Um, and so they, you know, they're there, but they were an esoteric study, a study that was you know what's happening they were the biology of the world the chemistry it was sort of like everyone doesn't have to study this it was um a study that was the primary focus of the scientists you know so to speak the spiritual scientists and it was you know it was it was it wasn't relevant to lay people um at a, at a certain point, you know, how we live our lives. But from, from these concepts, you know, we can derive moral lessons. And so in a practical manner, the, the, the moral lessons are what are the take home. And so those 
for whom a PhD in you know psychology and and philosophy are are compelling, you know those people love these concepts and you know how and why and but not everyone um, cares to philosophize and especially. Um, for people who are either, you know, making a living or, um, you know, raising children, you know, it's like, I don't, I, I need to f- put food on the table. Um, I don't want to philosophize. So it was, so it's not that there's, the concepts are neither good nor bad. They just exist. And they are, you know, for those who want to understand the chemistry and the inner workings of the world. Um, and so at certain points through history, they were redacted in, um, in one fashion or another. Um, and ultimately the the Baal Shem Tov, and then ultimately the um the um the movements that um emerged um believed to to different varying degrees that it was a time of disseminance of of mass um, of, of that, 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 that we could break this down to the lay people. We could take these concepts and break them down and explain them to, um, you know, to women and children, you know, to, to every person. So in the, in the same way that we learn, you know, Tanya, um, today, you know, right. Like that this was, you know, conceptually, right. We can all, we all have access to these ideas. So um, it was that that was radical. So the ideas themselves were not radical. The ideas themselves were, you know, mysticism and Kabbalah and the Vilna Gaon, who was sort of like the primary um, Gadol who opposed the widespread disseminants and led to um, a more pervasive communal resistance, he was a Kabbalist himself. He was the greatest Kabbalist. And, um, and so the, the issue was not the content, but rather the overreach and the inaccessibility and the irrelevance and the potential for damage if fallen into the wrong hands. So imagine, right, if someone, th- this, so this, this concept of, you know, the imminence of God in the world, the, you know, God is in, in everything that we do and in, in all of us. And in, right, so imagine if someone says, well, because, you know, you're godly and I'm godly, then, you know, the pig is godly, I can eat bacon, um, you know, everything's godly, right? If everything's godly and someone has a misunderstanding, then they'll, justify behavior that's not godly and that it's just not something that we want to make accessible to everyone because it's like you you need to pass a test first like you can't just have Hasidism. Hasidism. you just you can't have these concepts they're like the icing on the cake you need to eat your meat and potatoes first you need to be completely versed in gemara in all of the intricate details of halacha, once you are, you know, have reviewed shas multiple times and you are the purest of the pure, then you have the right to access this, you know, the the highest of the high. But this is, you know, this is Hashem's holiness. You know, we, we as people, you know, here are the people who are just, you know, per- pursuing the mundane, we don't have the right to, to think and talk about this. And in fact, and we could get it wrong and we probably will get it wrong. And so it's not, it's beyond us. You know, we just, it's, it's, it, it's an Avera. Like for us to invest, like, you know, it's wasting our time. We should be concentrating on our families and our pranas and just being good. Erlich yidin. And, um, you know, so so it's there was really a religious problem. You know that, that this is an avera. These people are bringing us all to sin, because um, because we're we're corrupting something that is holy, and um, and one can say that in the aftermath of the um, the um, debacle of um, 
debacle <laughs> of Shabtai Sfi. Um, so he was, you know, a Kabbalist who um, was supported as the the Messiah of his time, and then he converted to um, Islam. And so there was this, you know, it was a real false belief. People had sold their belongings and moved to Eretz Israel, and you know, it really upset the Jewish people at the time. And so there was a natural resistance to, um, to, you know, embracing, um, embracing the esoteric concepts because it could lead to disastrous consequences. And so in the aftermath of that was not more than 50 years prior to the emergence of, you know, Hasidism as we know it today. And so that's, you know, that's in their lifetime. You know, that wasn't ancient history. So it, it made sense, you know, their their perspective really made sense and was embraced um, by many. And um, there there is also um, in the, the the Rashi versus Rambam Ramban. Miriam Leah, you've frozen. Your screen is frozen. Maybe let's type it to her. I think she went off. Maybe let's wait. She'll come back on. Maybe someone could call her. You know, unfortunately, I don't have her number. Um, oh, okay. But I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure that if she went off, she's probably trying to get back on. God willing, she will be able to. Everybody, thank you for your, everybody for your patience. I'm trying to get her number, so let's just wait another couple of minutes, okay? Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, it must be so frustrating for her, too. I'm sorry. So, does anyone have the name again of Meira so we can have it on to remember to stop for her? Did anyone get it down? That Naomi mentioned, the Rikushalema, Meira.
Yeah, it's Meira Bus. What does it say? Oh, here she sure. is. Okay. I'm really sorry. That's okay. Um, We're welcome Something just back. happened with my network. I have. I am so sorry. I just. I just gave myself a hotspot on my phone and had to reconnect. I. I don't know what happened. It's. It's okay. Here you are. Thank you. Not. Thank you. Don't worry about it. I also. I am so sorry. Um. Okay, I don't actually know what I was up to. I think I was um, um, adding this little like dive up to. Um, does anybody remember? Um, I I really Le apologize. Um, last word was Ramadan. So you were you were talking about the 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 um, after Ramadan and the Ramadan. The Rambam and the Ramban. Exactly. Rashi okay. and Rambam. So, so it was Rashi. Thank you. Okay, so it was Rashi versus the Ramban um, on Vayikra 19.2. And um, so so it's about, you know, how, how to make ourselves holy. Um, and um, you should be holy. So the, um, the passage follows, um, <laughs> the passage follows um, the, the, the uh, improper relationships. And so Rashi says, you know, um, shot is that this is what makes you holy is to not engage in um, inappropriate relationships. But the Ramban says, um, that even, um, even things that are permitted to you, you can make yourself holy just because you're allowed to eat something does not mean you have to. Just because you're allowed to engage in something does not mean that you have to. That being holy is um, a, a different level. So it's sort of, you know, so the translation to this, to the application is that the, the mm -hmm. Litfish perspective was based on on Torah itself, you know, not, and not only, you know, anxiety and fear for, you know, what could happen, you know, it's based on real, you know, sources of Torah saying that, you know, just because you can study the esoteric philosophy and concepts does not mean that you have to, right? Like if you, if it's, 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 it's not, it's beyond you to, to take upon yourself something that you don't have to do, just be an Ehrlich Jew. And that's fine. And it's beyond fine. It's what Hashem wants of us. He does not, there's no halacha to study mysticism. So, you know, you do it because it's part of Torah, right? But the concept, of course, from, you know, Hasidim and why the movement ultimately um, succeeded, you know, is because it was, not based on, you know, um, a, a false sense of, you know, I'm, I'm overreaching, but rather uh, on providing access to those who were yearning and, and for those whom this Torah, th this, these messages and these concepts are riveting and, and, and draw the receiver close to Hashem and close to Torah and the concepts of, um, of, 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 of disseminance of, of, of spreading the light is conceptually also praiseworthy in the sense that you're lighting lamps, right? You're bringing light. So you're, you're sharing light, you're spreading light. Why keep the light if the world is so dark why keep the light, be, you know, closed up, behind, locked behind the door? Like, spread the light, share, um, you know, illuminate the darkness. And these concepts and these um, and providing access to Torah, um, to people who don't have access, you know, who, who haven't learned Shas, who, 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 who haven't, you know, who don't spend all day davening and who don't, you know, who, who aren't in the base midrash all day, but the, the, the lay people, the little people, you know, everyone needs Torah. Everyone needs Hashem. Everyone needs to be able to connect on their level. And, and so it's not fair. It's not fair to um, withhold this, these diamonds and this gold if, 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 if they can be made accessible, if, if Hashem, a relationship with Hashem can be made accessible. So make it accessible. 
so um so they both had right like they both had <laughs> you know more high moral values and high, you know that there wasn't this was a lashem shemaim but the vitriolic um you know um correspondence and um and 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 fear you know the fears and the you know, you're, you're fighting for Torah. Both sides were fighting for Torah, right? Both sides were fighting for Hashem. So it was a milchama for Hashem, but it was really this milchama, right? If you're fighting for Hashem, you're fighting. Um, and um, so that's, so that's where, um, where it started. And to a certain degree, you know, that's where it still is. Um, although to a certain degree, it's obviously relaxed because there is success. You know, this wasn't um, the, this did not reflect the same um, pattern as the Shabtai Svi um, movement. Um, and so, um, and to a large degree, the Hasidic movement has become mainstream um, in the sense that, you know, <laughs> Hasidim follow the same customs and halachas and, you know, you have the same protocol for being a part of this Hasidic group or that Hasidic group as one had, you know, in the early days of the, you know, Litvish circles that, you know, you have to cross your T's and dot your I's. It's not just, you know, Hefker, Torah learning for the, um, for, for lay people, you know, there's, there's each Hasidic group has, you know, a quite voluminous set of, you know, its own, um, you know, um, customs, um, that, uh, that, that, that have become, um, have become, um, standardized, you know, so that even though in the early days, it was more, um, you know, you know, connect for, for the sake of connecting and connect for the spiritual, for the sake of spirituality, um, you know, in many, in many ways, you know, standardization, you know, removes the, it removes the personalization from the experience. So, you know, I'm Hasidic today because, you know, my family is Hasidic and that means that I attend this school and I follow these customs, but it's not emerging from within that I'm following Hasidism. I'm, I'm on fire for Torah and Hashem. And, um, you know, so, 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 so Hasidism today, you know, is not, um, is not the same, but it is based on these concepts. And so now you have translated into today's different differences of opinion, you know, on whether it's on halacha or hashkafa, um, in terms of, you know, how rabbanim, you know, rule. Um, and so I guess just one, um, and, and actually one, one idea that's just um, a, a breakdown of the idea of how the imminence um, is also, um, um, understood just so that we understand is how to not have a corrupted imminence, how to say, you know, is it, is it, is it true that if God is in the world, that therefore, um, can mom, um, that there, <laughs> um, that therefore, um, um, that, 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 therefore, you know, what is, what is Isser has become mutter that what is, um, what is forbidden, you know, if, if there's godliness in it, then, you know, so too, you know, um, <coughs> profanity and immodesty is also, you know, in Hashem's world. So, um, there are different forms of, um, sparks in terms of elevating the sparks. So in everything, if the physical world is also godliness, matter is godliness. Um, but there are varying degrees. There's degrees where something is automatically holy. There's degrees where it's neutral and you convert, you convert the matter to holiness. And there's, um, a level of matter, which is, um, sort of like uh, uh, burnt food, right? Like you just can't eat it. So, um, so that neutral, neutral, um, that neutral concept is food that once you cook it, like you have to activate it, you have to convert it, you have to form it, um, and you have to cook the food. And then once you cook it, it becomes edible. Um, and then there's, um, and then the, there's some food that's just, you know, you pluck it right off the tree, and it's just 
you know, um, absolutely, you know, divine. Um, and so there are just conceptually as a metaphor to understand in the same way that, that that's how the spiritual world operates in the sense that some things are inedible. Um, and so we want to focus on the parts of the um, spirituality to elevate the sparks, which is to sort of like cook the food. You know, when you say a bracha um, on food, it, it like activates the spirituality of that item. The, the pear is, is also even itself neutral, but when you say the bracha, it, it, it converts that pear to um, the, the sparks in that pear, to the, the, the molecules, the spiritual molecules um, in that pear become, um, become, you know, activated. And so you're ingesting the, a deeper level of spirituality when you say that, when you say a bracha. Um, so, so we don't understand it, but just to give that basic conceptual understanding so that we don't leave here with a confusion, um, that, um, but so, so, so in the world, um, and, um, the, 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 example that I was going to give was just technology, obviously, you know, you have technology, <laughs> controversial topic. Um, you have technology, you have a phone, you know, here we're using it to be, you know, righteous women and say Nishma, to, you know, to Hillam and, and, and yearning towards Hashem and WhatsApp chats that you learn Torah and you say Tefillah and you motivate each other. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's so much good that is, um, available through technology. It's a neutral electronic device, but there is, because there is possible, you know, it's danger, you know, right? Like if, the, if you encounter the wrong, if you turn, make the wrong turn and you encounter, um, you know, something that you shouldn't as a from Jew and, and you don't have the strength to, um, to, to exercise self-control and discipline and, and you're undeveloped in that area. So, you know, you could, you could come to Avera. So, you know, is it is it better to just with withdraw from technology entirely and and try to remain holy um, and to be holy, or is it more, um, a, you know, is it you know morally more morally um, praiseworthy to engage and to elevate the world, to use technology, to make the world a better place, to go out and to fight the fight and to bring light and to, um, you know, so where are we on this spectrum? And I think that, um, you know, and so there's no judgment, there's a bell curve. And I think that this is um, just from, you know, research and that I've, that I um, have done in just um, academic, the academic world, that in general, there's a bell curve, you know, in every trait, in every skill. Um, you know, some people in a class are really good at math and other people, you know, you couldn't pay them to do math. So there's a bell curve and most people are in the middle. And so, so too, with every trait, some people are naturally self-disciplined and others are, it's really, really hard. And so to make any general statements about how everyone, um, how everyone is just the world that Hashem created, the way he created us is, is in this um, format of a bell curve. And so the, the best we can do is to respect those who fall on a different side of the spectrum on somewhere else. Um, and in the sense that we're all one body, you know, the, the eye doesn't look at the foot and say, why can't you see as well as me? I can see so well. Why can't you see? And if the foot said, you know, well, why can't you, why can't you walk? Why can't you move? Right? Like I can move so well and you can't move at all. And right. Like, so if the body parts are fighting with each other, like it's pointless, like, you know, no one's going to move no one's going to see. Yeah. And so we, yeah. as a family, as a unit, yeah. as a whole, yeah. you know, we are less yeah. functional. Yeah. Um, and so the best is that, you know, if this yeah. eye sees yeah. that the foot has a the stubs, the toe and the hand comes and rubs the toe and right. Like that the body just nurtures itself and the, the, the parts work together and that we see where, where, yeah. where one is yeah. suffering, the other jumps in and, um, 
And so there, it's actually, um, we all have the common DNA, you know, um, but, the, but the idea, it's actually a spiritual trait to be able to appreciate the other. Um, so someone who is not like ourselves, um, um, that, that, that is actually, you know, a, a, a spiritual, something that comes naturally to people that are more disposed to spirituality and less naturally for people who don't. So again, we can't judge people who, you know, don't accept others you know we just we have to just work on the spiritual people of the world the people that are here on this call learning nishmas have to find ways to you know to bring the light to to share this the the wisdom that you all the we we uniquely have to Miriam, Leia, on that to understand note, I the wanna... spiritual trait you know to be spiritual and to bring that to the jewish people um Miriam, and Leia, so you know from uh, on the horns of yeah. on that note I, we're gonna have to stop in a moment or oh. two I'm oh I, okay fine no but, problem that was my uh, sort of conclude that was my concluding remark go ahead go ahead because it's it's a beautiful message go ahead um, no, it was just, I was just going to end with from, you know, that we say in the Shmonastery from the horns of Re'emim to the, you know, to lice, you know, Hashem created every, every tiny and every large, you know, creation. And, you know, it's upon us to just appreciate the, um, you know, the, the large, the small, the, the, the black, the white, the differences and, um, and bring our strength to the Jewish people and, and not to judge people who have areas of weakness where we have strength. And so you, you all are the spiritual gadolim of the generation. Miriam Leah, thank you. You are amazing. Thank you for taking us on this journey of the amazing questions and deep questions that you have had and for like unraveling some of what you, we've learned about it. We really are very privileged to hear it. Thank you. And for your passion and for your just beauty and sharing it over. We're very grateful to you. I'm, I'm sorry that we have to end right now. And I want to wish everybody a Chodesh Tov. May all your beautiful um, yearnings and all the refus that we're yearning for. And um, may everybody have just all good this month. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Leia's focus was just unbelievable. With all the distractions still focused like unbelievable. Yeah. Leia all <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. share, beautiful. Thank you yeah, so thank much. Thank you. It was really beautiful. beautiful. Thank, thank you. you.